Hey guys, welcome back to Algos Explained. This is David Kim, and today is a special video. We're not going to be going over any specific algorithm question or API. Rather, this is a study schedule for anybody who's interested in jumping ship. Um, maybe you're not jumping ship, maybe you're just uh, getting a job for the first time, or maybe you're coming out of school, or maybe you haven't been working for a while, and you want to get into it. But either way, this is a study schedule that I've created for myself. Um, before interviewing with Google, I I use this study schedule to get myself into shape and uh, long story, well, I didn't get the job offer and so if that's your indication of a good study schedule, you can stop watching now. But in terms of what this did for me, I got all the way onto the onsite and I was able to answer every single one of their questions. And so uh, they did get back to me because you're probably going to ask me um, why, but they did say that they wanted me to solve it a little faster. Um, that was the only piece of feedback that I was able to get from the recruiter. So um, I would say this is still successful and I wanted to share with everybody uh, who's watching. And so hopefully you, maybe you could start the process a little earlier than I did. I, I did this process for about a month, I would say. And um, I was at a comfortable stage. I was able to answer all those questions, like I said. And uh, had I had maybe five extra minutes per interview, maybe the outcome would have been different, who knows. But uh, enough, about, uh, enough about that, let's get on to the schedule. And uh, first, let me um, tell you that this is a very time-consuming and rigorous schedule. Is uh, I created the schedule after Google contacted me. And so it's not something that I've been doing for a while, but rather <clears throat> they contacted me and I didn't want to let the opportunity pass. And so I just put together a strategy that I felt would help me get to where I needed to be by the time that was reasonable to kind of still interview with them and everything. And so, um, yeah, it's going to, if you're going to attempt this uh, at your own, do it at your own pace. Um, I would recommend doing it at the pace that I've said, but if you are doing it now without any prospects of like the top tier company job interviews, then maybe you don't have to do it as rigorously. But if you do have someone in line, um, and then yes, uh, go at the pace and maybe if you have been talking to a top tier company like Google, Amazon, or Facebook, and uh, Microsoft too, I guess, um, and uh, you're already past the on-site, or, or, or no, not past the on-site, you're already past the recruiter call and you need to do the, the phone interview and you need to do the on-site, maybe you want to take it a little faster because I did have more time than that. And so let's go ahead and start with kind of the schedule, what you're going to be doing day to day. And day to day, you're going to be looking at the foundational uh, section. That's the top right corner. You're going to see concepts, data structures, and algorithms. And you're going to be reviewing every single one of those, or not every single one, but you're going to be hitting each and every one per day. And you can see on the lower half of my whiteboard, day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a full week event, and day one is Monday. And it's important that day one is your Monday, uh, just because I assume everyone's weekend is a little easier than their weekdays. Um, for me, it was because I work but uh, it might be different for you. Maybe you're busier on uh, the weekends. Maybe you do a weekend job or something like that. So definitely cater it to kind of what you're working with, but for an average person who's working, um, weekends were kind of where I had more time, thus day six and day seven, I kind of have more things on there. And so what you wanna, what, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna do concepts, data structures, and algorithms for each and every day. We're gonna do bits and pieces of it and the the secret behind this strategy is that through repetition, we're going to kind of ingrain these into our minds. So we're not going to be spending like two hours a day. Uh, maybe on Monday, we're not going to be spending two hours on bit manipulation. You're going to be doing that. You're going to maybe listen to a video. Uh, I think yeah, concepts is one of those uh, one of the sections that I have videos for. Not my videos, but a video playlist that I put together. Um, and you're not going to be kind of spending two hours a day on each single one in the bullet point, you're going to be hitting them all, but not too long. You definitely want to put in more time once it's crunch time, but at the same time, this is not, the secret to this is not cramming it, is hoping that you have enough time to kind of make it a repetitive process where recursion, oh yeah, I know that because I've been doing it for a whole month and I've been doing it almost uh, two times a week, something like that. And so, um, I would say uh, in concepts, recursion and big O, the most important, big O, the most important thing, then is recursion, then it's bit manipulation, 
The only reason why I really have bit manipulation on there is because one of my friends said that on his Google on-site, uh, that concept came up. And because he knew little to nothing about it, um, he kind of tanked that one. And I didn't want that to happen to me, so I had that on my concepts. Um, going over to data structures, pretty much all of these are important. Um, I would say if you're running out of time, uh, depending on what part of the interview process you're at, um, graph, graphs and grids, that's more of an on-site thing. And so you're probably not going to see that on the phone interview. If you do, know that you got a really hard phone interview because other people have had easier ones. Um, but I would save the graph and grids for the on-site kind of section if you're running out of time. Say your phone interview is next week. Um, save graph and grids for later. Um, tries to, it's a very niche thing in terms of what the interviewers ask just because um, they do have a list of stuff that they can ask and uh, or they like to ask too because not every interviewer is going to have experience with tries they're gonna if the, if an interviewer is more comfortable with heaps he's probably gonna ask you a heap question and, and through that logic there are gonna be less try questions that come out nonetheless it can come out therefore I put on the data structures because it's one of those things where it's not too hard to grasp and if you just took a moment to learn it uh, you probably have it down and for the interview too for algorithms, uh, almost all of these are important. Again, I keep saying that, uh, but really all of these things are important. I'm trying not to put in useless stuff here in the study schedule. Um, for the source, I would say insertion and radix, maybe one of the lesser important things, merge, heap, quick, uh, important. Merge sort, probably going to be one of your your best friends. Um, in terms of knowing, in terms of these sorts, I want you to be able to code them. Uh, when I say okay, code me merge sort, I want you to be able to create that whole algorithm where you can do that. When I say, okay, code for me heap sort, you're going to have to create that whole thing for me uh, in terms of uh, let me create a, create a heap or, well, I guess that kind of goes into data structures, but um, le okay, let me take a step back. When I say data structures, I want you to be able to um, code for me these whole classes. And so when I say build for me a tree, that means build for me a tree class. When I say build for me heaps, heap class with insertion, uh, deletion, everything, um, and be being able to explain to me the the big O of each process. So like say insertion is a big O of N, something like that. Why? Why is deletion why does deletion take longer? Why is that as fast? If we use more memory, will it will can we be faster? Something like that. Um, sort same thing. I want to merge sort then I want to be able to call that function on like an array and you're going to have to be able to have coded that. Um, for searches, definitely this is kind of more, maybe more like, or actually no, this is, this is the same algorithms. You're going to have to be able to do those. Dijkstra's a little bit harder. Um, I don't think that you're going to really see that again on the on-call interview at least. Um, if you get that on the on-site, then I think that would probably have been fair game at that point. But um, yeah, uh, not too many extra stuff on the searches there. And so that, that goes over why we need these concepts and algorithms. And say, say you have a strength in one of these. Say you are super good at heaps. Uh, maybe you were in school or something like that. Or maybe at work you, you have been working with heaps or trees. And you don't feel like you need to study that. Well, if like say on day two you see trees, um, and if you're comfortable with that, why don't you replace that with something that you do know or that you don't know as much or just look for new data structures that you have uh, you don't know about and do that. And I believe that when I put together the, the playlist, I might, have an, I might have a couple of extra videos in there that I don't have on here. Um, I would recommend watching all those videos per day. I do have seven different playlists that I, that I myself watched every single day at times two speed just because I didn't want to spend too much time on it but at the same time I wanted the re repetition of ingraining that into my memory and so let's go over to the top left side now right under study schedule it says weekday algorithms so the idea behind this is that you're going to be doing three questions a day for every weekday and so after you come home from work or or come home from whatever you're doing um, that take that took probably the majority of your day 
you're going to have to do one whiteboard question, uh, make it an easy question on LeetCode, and I highly recommend LeetCode. I know if you follow my channel, I did a lot of Code War videos, but when I was really crunching down to study for the for my um, interviews, I leaned more towards LeetCode, and which is why I aim to make more LeetCode videos now for this channel. But um, in terms of this study schedule goes, LeetCode, LeetCode. Um, and so whiteboard, do one easy. And when I, if you don't have a whiteboard like I do, um, you could do what I do. I mean, buy this paper from Amazon. I just stuck it on my wall. But um, if you don't want to do that, definitely just get a paper and pen, uh, paper and pencil, and do that. Actually, take get a paper and pen because you don't want to be erasing too much. Um, although on the whiteboard you can erase, you don't want to get into that habit. Uh, so one easy, one medium. The medium question, go ahead and code it on the computer and uh, write it right there. And uh, one hard. And on the hard, I say attempt or solve because for this, I don't want you spending too much time on the solution. I don't want you to be banging your head for an hour or two hours trying to get the hard questions because more often than not for the hard, there is probably some strategy that you have to have known in order to get the answer to that. And I feel like it's more valuable for you to maybe get 30 minutes on attempting this question kind of seeing what kind of questions there are. I mean, it, it can be tricky in this way or that way. I want you to get exposure to that and without wasting too much time um, at a dead end, go to the solutions and look at kind of go to the solutions and look at how they did it. And uh, after looking at the solution, you can go ahead and solve it yourself or you can just call that a day right there. Um, when, it time, when it comes to crunch time, I highly recommend you go more towards trying to change that to your own code, but at the same time, really depends on your, your time, how much you got left. Um, when I say look at the answers on lead code, there's no real way to look at the answers on lead code except for the fact that you can go into the like the comment section and there, there are going to be people who post their solutions on there. And most of the time, uh, well, I do most of my stuff in JavaScript and there aren't always JavaScript JavaScript answers but I can go ahead and look at a Java answer and kind of look at kind of the steps they took. In terms of looking at algorithm answers, the concepts are always going to be the same. I mean, uh, a for loop is going to look different, but you, you're going to notice a for loop and you're going to know, okay, they created this object. Uh, maybe they created a map instead in a different language or whatnot. And um, it might look different than traversing through the map or the object or whatnot, but you're going to know that's what happened. And so that's the idea behind the solution to the hard questions and so go ahead and look at the answers for that on the weekends double it up so two easies two mediums two hards on the weekends double that up uh, I'm assuming you have more time and if you don't look at what you're spending your time on if are you just going out with friends are you eating out are you playing games none of that no time for any of that um, really if you have commitments that you cannot ask someone else to even do for you then then uh, maybe if you're super busy on the weekend as you are on the weekdays, then I would say go to ones, but try your very best. It's your weekend, make the most of it. You have one chance at this until maybe a year later, but um, double it up. When, it time, when it's crunch time, I, assume, I, that I define that as almost like you got two weeks out. Two weeks out, go ahead and let go of the easy. And crunch time meaning two weeks out towards the on-site. If you're still doing the um, on-call interview, or not the on-call, sorry, the phone interview, then go ahead. You don't have to do two mediums and one hard. You can if you want. And if the easies have been doing being too hard, or sorry, if the easies have been too easy, then go ahead and get rid of that and skip to two mediums and one hard uh, earlier in the process. It doesn't have to be crunch time. And of course, on the weekends, double that up. So you're going to be doing four mediums and two hards. But... Yeah, once it's crunch time before the on-site, really there's no point in, in doing the easy questions. Um, even after the phone interview, if you just want to jump towards uh, getting rid of the easy, feel free to do that. Um, the easy is there to kind of give you like that whiteboard experience, um, to give you that pen and paper experience, and to be a confidence booster sometimes. Uh, sometimes you just need that boost. Um, but when it comes to crunch time, no more, no more confidence booster on the easy, no more easy wins, two mediums and one hard. And so now the last bit of this study schedule is the four or the 
the seven days on the bottom here we're going to be going over these specific ones and uh, I'm just going to let you look at that on your own time the, the thing that I want to go over is how we're going to use this in order to pick the questions that we're going to be doing for our weekday so one easy one medium one hard how do you know which ones to grab and um, you're gonna you're gonna let the days guide you with that and so say say for day one you see tries look for a algorithm question that has to do with tries and you can definitely do that on LeetCode and so I would use that to your advantage don't just do random questions um, although sure that's fine uh, if these con like say on day one none of these concepts are familiar to you and you don't feel comfortable doing any of that and you feel like it's going to be a roadblock for you then don't let that be an excuse for you to not do any of these one easy one medium or one hard algorithm questions just just be random for that at that day but I encourage you since you're going to be doing these every week the same days um, you're going to eventually be so comfortable with tries that you're going to be able to look at a try question on LeetCode and be able to solve it maybe the first week you weren't the third week most likely you will actually probably the first day after you read you read the try uh, watch a try video you might be able to do that too but um, in any case uh, you do what works same thing for all the all the rest of these days um, on day six and seven I have more uh, you see how like on day four DFS was by itself day three BFS was by itself but day six DFS and BFS together so the weekends definitely I, I stacked it up if uh, like I said, if your weekends are more busy and you have a day, maybe your Wednesday is a lot easier than anything else, uh, go ahead and shift these shift these so that it works for you, but uh, create the schedule for yourself from this kind of example that I've put up here and try to replicate it every single week, day in and day out. And for me, when I've done this, I have had days where I just simply didn't get to a medium question that day or I didn't simply get to a, a easy whiteboard question that day. I kept a log for myself. How much did I do each day? And if I didn't do one easy on a Monday and it got to a Tuesday and uh, I had done the medium and hard the, the, on the Monday but I didn't do the easy for whatever reason, don't let yourself kind of sweep that under the rug. Do two easies though. So if you don't do something, it'll follow you. Just let it follow you and do it. If you didn't do a medium or if you didn't do a hard, just do it on the next day. Uh, and that that's not to say don't procrastinate. On Monday, if you have the time, if you're looking at that hard question or if you're looking at the lead code and you're saying, okay, eh, I can do it tomorrow, don't do that. But if for some reason, like say on a Saturday you went out, um, although I'm encouraging you don't be going out for this duration of the period just because it's going to be so important to you. Um, maybe you had to go out. Uh, maybe some emergency happened and you weren't able to do any of the algorithm questions that day. Go ahead and do it on Sunday. So Sunday is going to be extra busy for you. You're going to have to do times two of that and times two of the Saturday. But don't let that kind of just fall away. Uh, it's, it's a waste. Every single day matters and every single day is going to kind of be precious. It is. It really is. Um, and if you see day three, Wednesdays, I kind of did less on that just because I wanted to um, give myself a little break in the middle uh, but so that's why that day is a little shorter or it has less concepts or, or less items um, and choose K I don't have that on my list on the foundations but I do have a YouTube video on the playlist there and so watch out for that um, and other than that it, this is pretty much it if I, I guess one thing that I do want to end on is say it I guess this is coming from where you are in life right now if you're a student that just came out a lot of these things are kind of probably going to be more familiar to you and so cater to that maybe I would suggest you do more of the algorithm whiteboarding questions versus trying to review all these concepts because man you've just been out of school maybe you already know these concepts like the back of your hand and if you don't yes this schedule is going to work for you too but and say you are you don't have a job right now and you're in the job search, your full-time job is a job search, then you're going to be doing weekend days for every single day. And so the videos are going to be the same. You're going to be watching just the one set of videos, but in terms of the whiteboardings or the lead code questions, you're going to be doing double. And on the weekends, I would I don't think that should be times four. That should still be times two. 
But um, if if your full time job is job search, then let this let every single day be a times two day for you. And if you this this um, if you are kind of in the job right now, you have a nine to five or whatnot, you come home, it's gonna be tiring for you. It is. You're gonna have to eat dinner uh, quickly, maybe. Um, you might have very little time to spend with your family, but um, it's gonna be worth it if you can get onto that on site and answer all the questions. At that point, it is what it is. You know, the results are gonna be whatever it is gonna be, but um, I suggest to you that you put in the effort to make sure that you don't regret not having done an extra algorithm question or something like that. You might think an extra algorithm question is not going to make the difference, but I would say what if it did? And you don't want to be saying that what if. And so this is the same schedule I've created for myself. It worked for me. Uh, didn't get me the job like I said, unfortunately, but I did answer all the on-site questions. And so yes, this is good, what I'm going to use again if I have another one of those opportunities that presents itself to me. Um, hopefully it does that same thing for you hopefully it'll get you past that phone interview it'll get you past the on-site and getting the job so good luck good luck out there um, this was Algo Explained I'm David Kim if you like the video uh, like comment and subscribe and uh, maybe a few months out if you use the schedule and it worked for you come back and leave a comment for me thanks very much and have a good one bye